hello youtube as you can see uh, i've got another unboxing today and it's these very nice um halogen class 33s in the uh, drs uh, livery and um i mean they're exclusive to rails of sheffield as well that's where i got them from and i also uh, had them sound fitted by uh, roads and rails so i'll put a link in the description um if anyone's interested but there they are and uh, i'll tell you from the box it's pretty heavy so uh they look good um i've had mixed reviews of halogen really um i got like a little single car rail bus that didn't turn out very well but that was second hand so i can't really um accurately say it's to do with the model itself and um the class 05 model the uh, I've mentioned in the past very nice model detail wise it works fine but it does have a lot of parts that seem to fall off it quite easily and it, where the uh, super glue has gone on them um, so basically took out the packaging that's what we've got two locos the usual ice cube packaging and there's our little booklet as you can see it's a five pole motor heavy die cast chassis um, I can, and it's already said about the uh, the weight, and it says it can haul over 15 coaches on level track. Uh, not that it'd ever do that on my layout, but yeah, if you want to pause it and have a little read through that, you can do. Um, that's all about uh, DC fitting. Um, I don't have to worry about that, so that's a list of all the parts of the loco. Seems to be quite a common thing now that comes with uh, double O gauge models. So list of spares and so on. Um, that's a brief history on the loco. Again, if you want to pause it, uh, won't go into too much uh, detail about that. But basically, um, been looking down the old Carnforth Steam Sound Depot. If anyone's ever seen my videos on that, um, one of these locos, this one here. We'll start with this one. It's a bit sad really but now i've got it in model form it's uh it's quite nice but i've seen this loco for years basically being cannibalized for parts by uh, west coast railways but let's keep another loco running so but yeah number 33030 um i'll put a picture at the end of this video of what it's currently like but each time i see it it's uh Seems to have less and less parts on it. It's like the glazing's missing. One of the buffer stops is missing. Last time I saw it. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing these running over um, Arnside over the viaduct, and I've got a not a, not a great video from the early two thousands, but I've got a video, so I might include that at the end of this video of them running. I tried looking for more videos of the real things in this livery running on YouTube, and there's not much there really. So they couldn't have been in service for very long with. Uh, Direct rail services. Well, looking at the uh, the detail, I like the way the details are already added to the loco as well. I thought that's a nice touch, and uh, it's very weighty as well. I'll just zoom in. So we we haven't got a driver there, but I suppose that doesn't really matter. But yeah, I think that I always like the look of the class thirty threes as well. So that's underneath. Like I say, it is pretty heavy. So uh, we we'll get the second one out. Um, so this actual loco, as well as three others. Um, so all four passed on to West Coast Railways that Direct Rail Services had, as far as I know. And as and um, I think three of them are in service. There's only the first one i've just shown then that was being used for spare parts to keep the other three going so this one is in west coast railways livery now and it's still running on the main line so that's good and it's it's nice that there's a few of them running because i think they're quite a nice looking diesel um but yeah i chose this livery because um i think it's something different and uh it wasn't a livery that lasted very long either i don't think so here we are 33025 and uh, I'm going to get uh, these running on the layout soon, and we'll see them pulling some nuclear flask wagons, and maybe um, a few Mark II 
the RS coaches, which they wouldn't have pulled, but if they'd have survived a bit longer with the company, then maybe they would have. You can see the fan there is a separate uh, part. That looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, very happy with it so far. Like I say, I'm, I never get round to uh, sticking the detail parts on, so I'm glad that they've already uh, added them. But time will tell if parts start falling off and so on. Again, hopefully not, because uh, they already look stunning. So the only other um, pieces, let's just have a little look here. We've actually got quite a few pieces. <laughs> let's have a look. So we've got um, the snow plows, they look pretty good. I think I might add one to them to one of the logos. Got more bits of piping. Again, I'm not too sure what they are, the grey pieces. If anyone wants to enlighten me. Yeah. I thought they'd added all the details, to be honest with that. And you see this big bag of parts, and you're like, wow, there's loads of stuff there. Um, the only thing I'll be adding at the moment is the uh, couplers to connect them up. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, get these on the track, and uh, we'll have a little running session. Right, we've got them on the track. Uh I'd like to point out something that um, I noticed with these Helgen, well diesel logos anyway because I've never had a steam engine, is these um, couplers always seem to like sink to the bottom. And I've actually had to take the front coupler off this one when I'm not uh, hauling the train because it catches on the uh, point work. So I don't know, if, uh, is it just me or is it um, a common thing with uh, Helgen logos? And what I've actually had to do is glue this piece to hold front plate back on because it just fell off and this one's the same if you look at that it just um just come loose one day i don't know if it's the heat or or what whether anyone else has uh this sort of issue but i'm hoping with these i won't have that issue but the couplers are already the same so we'll put that on the track here you can see that coupler there. I'm sure when it's connected up to a, a wagon and it's pulling something, then lift up a bit. But you can see that's quite tight and it's facing downwards. So um, we'll see how we get on with it anyway. But like I said, that's the only markdown that I can see so far um, that's affected other locos in the past. So um, we'll put that back on the uh, track and uh, we'll get them started up. In fact, I'll just couple them together. You have to forgive a bit of the background noise. There's a bit of building work going on again, but it's uh, it's the only time I've got free to do the filming. So let's see how we get on. Um, so the rear loco starts up first, as I was uh, told by the uh, the person who'd done the sound fitting for me, Richard. Um, so uh, right, so we start off with. Um, engine on which should be the rear loco that sounds pretty good doesn't it I've also got me a uh, little list of um, the sound functions, so I'll just go through a few of them, as it'll uh, take a long time. I've got the sound of these diesels as well. Um, the only heritage railway being able to visit today was the Chernock Valley Railway, and uh, they have one of these as well, that was getting started up. So let's try F2, which is playable high horn. And number three, which is low horn. Right, the next one's buffering up, which is only active when moving slowly, so we'll see that in a minute. 
Driver's door slam, six. Compressor, seven. And we have a variable fan squeal, F9. Number 10, guard's whistle. Right, so we'll uh, put the lights on as well. So we'll move forward, see how we do. I'll put the um, bang squeal on, see what segment's moving up. I might just turn off the, uh, the engine sound. Here we go.
Right, that concludes our uh, running session, and um, very happy with them. The uh, run really well, as you can see in the video, and uh, they do a really nice slow crawl as well. Um, very detailed. I uh, I can't say how accurate the local is, but it looks pretty good to me. Um, like I say, the only the only negative I can pick out is the uh, couplers because they are fiddly to fit without damaging all the detail that's already on the front of the loco so um but yeah apart from that i think it's a um, pretty good loco very happy with it and um i might even consider getting a west coast railways livery one in the future so um hope you liked the video and uh thanks again for watching and uh, keep an eye out for the next one thanks a lot